When it comes to public communication, narrative and storytelling are just the most incredibly important vehicles. Uh, in television, you know this, by the way, because television has this rather awkward thing that it actually has to have something on the screen the whole time that it's reporting on something. It can't, it can cut to a human being telling a story, but that gets very, gets very tedious after a very short period of time. So television has to find pictures. Pictures are concrete, so they have to be kind of concrete examples. And the language of the reporter has to be talking to the pictures. You can't have pictures of wildebeest running across the uh, Serengeti while um, you know, you're talking about some political argument in Westminster. So there always has to be some connection. So television makers in particular, and increasingly I think uh, newspaper writers, have realised that a good story, a specific case, is better than a talking head giving you an abstract argument. So it's about specific versus abstract. And I think that is absolutely the way to make a point in a compelling form. And, you know, I think that is, by the way, not just true of television, that is true of politics, it's true of business. The way to sort of sell something is to have a convincing story. I think any, if any journalist who tells you they're not picking a narrative on a story is actually lying to you. They may be lying to themselves too because just the order in which you present facts is picking a narrative. You know, simply talking about the bus that crashed rather than the 999 that didn't is technically picking a narrative. If we just gave a list of all the facts, even the order in which we put the list is <laughs> doing that. It'd be a boring narrative, but it's still one. And so I think we don't think enough about narratives, especially in politics. You usually put whatever the government's doing first give that some space, let them have a comment, and then maybe near the bottom is what the opposition said. Um, and it might be, maybe the criticism is more important than the announcement, maybe the backdrop is more important. Um, and so just because something's a default and it's comfortable, doesn't mean it's not a narrative and doesn't mean it's not a choice. Now, what stories do is they create a powerful medium of communication and a compelling one, and one that people are very disposed to kind of be engage, to engage with. So you've got a powerful tool there, right? Um, but it can be a slightly dangerous tool because the case study in television can be compelling but wholly untypical. Um, the story can be, you know, too good to be true. Uh, or in order to make it a story, you might have to just twist the fact a little bit. And there are facts. Uh, and you might have to twist the facts because this fact was an inconvenient one. And that the old sort of adage in journalism is, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. And so you may have some hard done by case in some social affairs story of a you know, person who's had great injustice against them. And then you discover, oh, by the way, there was this other fact that meant it was much more understandable what had happened to them. And the police hadn't really maltreated them because the police knew they'd committed 16 other crimes or, or whatever. And the story can actually become a, a, not a vehicle for communicating the truth in a compelling way, but the story becomes a vehicle for twisting the truth because the story is just such fun and you want to believe the story that you that you kind of yeah start disregarding fact. I think picking case studies, um, almost example families or something, how a policy is affected. It's almost like central casting, um, and this used to sort of be quite overtly racist um, in sort of years gone by. And in the 1980s, for example, the Sun would never put a black family in a positive news story or in a, they will be affected by a cut. Um, but places will pick families that look like something the paper will recognise. So in left liberal media, you might see same-sex couples or things like that put in illustratively in a way that you wouldn't in the mail. You'll often see quite traditional families. You might see fewer age gaps or people like that. Um, if people are talking about the effects of a policy 
you're more likely to see a family in work than say a family on benefits. And so all of this is central casting and a lot of this actually feeds readers' prejudices back to them. They don't get to see these other kinds of families in positive roles because editors worry they'll jar. I think a lot of that's subconscious. There's you know, a lot of liberal, sort of forward-thinking people in the media, but they project onto their audiences quite conservative attitudes. So story can be both a compelling form but can also be a source of bullshit generation and fake news. And personally, I think that's often that's often politically deliberate. You're trying to find a story that makes your argument in a compelling way. Often it's actually commercially deliberate. That if you're trying to sell papers, you want a good story, because that sells papers. And, and so, uh, you, you know, the, the desire to simplify and reduce something to a good story can be distorting for quite a few different motives, quite a few different motives. But it's a dangerous tool, but believe me, you would not want media to kind of throw that tool away, because you would be left with something that most people, your, your public discourse, if you didn't have stories as the kind of basic unit, your public discourse would cut most people out, because most people are, most people are good at listening to stories. You can give people 10 random facts, or a sort of, link them via a story and you'll have completely different outcomes. So I think a story is incredibly important, but it behoves those who tell stories to make sure the story follows the facts rather than, the, 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 rather than you know, the story follows the, the need for a narrative. Get more from The Open University. Check out the links on screen now.